Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the way I look at it, it's uh, like having your own treehouse and you want to show your friends. So anytime somebody like you takes interest in a place like this, yeah, I mean, giving a tour is fun. You know, crawling around this place is fun. You know, it's no matter how many times I do it, it's still fun to show somebody else what we got going on. So, so yeah, we're at Hell's Gate Haunted House in Lockport, Illinois. Haunted houses in general come from, yeah. okay, I do, the, I do theater, yeah, I do theater, I do film, uh, I, I produce events, I produce parties, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, through all of that, it, I'm a storyteller. You know, that's my job. My job is I'm a storyteller. Uh, I have producer, director, designer, and all that stuff on a card, but I could really just swipe it all away and just put John LaFlamboy, storyteller. Uh, because that's why I do all those other things. You know, I learned to do all of that because I like telling stories. Uh, and, and I grew up in theater doing that. You know, I grew up on the south side of Chicago and the Chicago suburbs, uh, kind of back and forth a lot. Uh, but the one thing that I had was theater. You know, that was the one thing that grounded me that, you know, gave me a place to go as, as a kid. And, you know, was, that passion took me to college. You know, I, I loved the stage. I loved the community. I loved, I loved sitting in a room with all these other artists and, and, and collaborating or arguing or listening and, and, and together coming up with a story to tell people. Uh, so that's kind of how it all started. I, I was at uh, the University of Southern Illinois, go Salukis, uh, and um, I proposed an idea that, that I had already proposed once in high school here in Lockport. I actually graduated Lockport uh, Township High School, uh, so I'm kind of coming home. You know, I've I've been out of Lockport since I was 17, and and now I'm back. You know, and, and I get to bring my, my show back. But you know, I, I proposed it in high school as a fundraiser, but I ended up proposing it uh, in college as a fundraiser. You know, in college I was uh, part of the Student Theater Guild. Yeah, and uh, the Student Theater Guild needed to get its members to the Southeastern Theater Conference, which is where you audition for summer jobs and professional theater work. This is how we take the next step in our careers. And I remember going to the department and saying, okay, we got this convention coming up. Where are the funds to send us? And they said, oh, no, there are no funds. There's funds for football players and for basketball players, but there are no funds for you theater people. Uh, so I was like, oh, geez, that's horrible. Like, this is our future we're talking about. So I went to the department. I'm like, right, we need to do a, a fundraiser. We got we to gotta take it into our own hands, create something, and go to this convention. And uh, they, they're like, all right, great. We'll do what we always do, John. We'll, we'll have a bake sale. Uh, and and we, had, we had the bake sale. And we... We made cookies all weekend, uh, and at the end, uh, we made uh, $76, and the cookies taste like crap. Uh, because we're not culinary arts students, <laughs> we're theater people, man. Like, we create worlds, we create stories, you know, we create characters, that's what we do. So uh, I decided as, I think I was a junior at the time, and I told all the seniors, I'm like, this is horrible, guys. <laughs> like, we're theater people, you know, we're paying for this education to learn how to build stuff and, and design stuff and light stuff and paint stuff and build costumes to put on those characters. Why are we not doing something like that for a fundraiser? Uh, so that's when I proposed that a theater company is best suited to start a haunted house business. There's no middlemen, you know, we can do it all in-house. Uh, and the chair of my department, Sarah, Dr. Dr. Sarah J. Blackstone, uh, gave me $900 of her own money and said, there's no school funding for this, but I believe in the idea. Here's 900 bucks, I hope you can get it back to me. Uh, and it was probably one of the most important things that happened to me in college. I took that 900 bucks and I made a haunted house in the mall uh, in an abandoned shoe store. It had like all of five rooms and they were tiny. Uh, and we made 900 bucks turn into $6,000 in two weeks. And as a poor theater student that eats potatoes and ramen noodles on a daily basis, looking at six grand in cash was like a huge aha moment. Uh, I thought I had something here. Uh, so I wrote a thesis, spent an entire semester perfecting the idea and the business plan, and I graduated with that business plan uh, and the goal to start a theater company that specializes in haunted houses so that we can make enough money to keep auditioning, keep doing theater, keep doing film, and not have to fall into a job or a career that was not creative, that would end up taking us out of that cycle, of that, of that scene. Uh, so that, that's it, that, in a nutshell. That, that's how it all started, that's how it all began. Um, you know, 
I'm a storyteller. I just wanted to tell stories. And I wanted to keep doing theater and film. I didn't, I didn't want to take a cubicle job somewhere. So, How was that? That was 96, was when I did that in, in college. That was my first one. And then I, I went to Holland and studied there for six months. Um, really changed uh, you know, my own way of how I looked at the artistic process, the, the creative process. Uh, and then really, I mean, the, the, the ability to communicate with the team. Because uh, you don't know how communication works and collaboration until you're sitting in a room with Costa Ricans and Germans and the American and you're trying to come up with something. Uh, because these are two, t these are three different worlds of how you communicate and express yourselves. And like, so I did six months of that and that was like my hard knocks of learning how to, how to, how to listen. You know, I think it's one of the, the biggest and most important things is how to, how to listen, you know, to your team. Because I was, of course, the stereotypical American. Da, 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 da. All I do is talk. I got these ideas and I wanted to jump out of my chair and do it immediately. And my friends, like my German friend on Lee would be like, whoa, American, sit down. <laughs> we have to talk more. And it was like, what's all this talking for? And I get all anxious. So, it, but it took those, you know, months uh, in Holland at the Utrecht School of the Arts to really kind of form, uh, I guess, my path as a producer, you know, because that's really where I started taking into account everybody and how to work with everybody and how to create a world. Uh, what was over there, you know, there's a lot of things happened to me over there. And when I came back, I had my thesis and I went out there and I got a job for an events company because they said, well, we love your haunted house idea, but we don't do those. So can you do that for a bar mitzvah? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> like, I've never been to a bar mitzvah, uh, but I did. I started doing bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and surprise parties and corporate parties and corporate picnics and uh, winter events. And that really helped build up the company. Um, and immediately I uh, met uh, Paul Siegel, the owner of Statesville. Uh, he was doing a hayride and a little black maze at the time and I came in and said this is what I can do This is what I want to do and um, I got lucky, you know, Paul said yes and said all right Here's the building do what you will with it and I've been doing that since 1998 So Statesville is uh, Statesville is always my baby, you know, it's like it, she's the haunted house I started with <laughs> it's, it's my first love uh, But since then I've done a dozen haunted houses around the Chicagoland area I now consult around the country for it. And, um, and now I'm here, uh, as well as Statesville. Uh, this has been my passion project for a decade, is Hell's Gate Haunted House. I wanted to resurrect the legendary Hell's Gate, uh, bring back the haunted house, the multi-level mansion hidden in the woods. Uh, the, the haunted house you had to walk through the cemetery to get to. The haunted house with the giant slide. The haunted house that was so cool, you can get your money back. Um, so. That, you know, my love for the haunted house industry and my love for storytelling uh, kind of led me out here in the middle of the woods to do this. Yeah, my dad, I could not have done this without my dad. What I mean, okay, so <laughs> my dad, okay, so my dad is uh, a, a land developer. He's a builder, you know, and he's been that since he was 22 years old. Um, so he's got a ton of experience. Uh, so for me, um, you know, and, and I brought him on into the company in 08 when we started doing the Fear Haunted House at Navy Pier. And I brought my dad in as like a producer uh, to help us out with the unions and with trucking and all these other elements that I was not used to. Uh, with the hunt world, you know, stuff I didn't, you know, ever run into. And he was a godsend. And, and it was funny, you know, it's my dad. <laughs> when I, <laughs> so I was supposed to go to law school, right? <laughs> that was the goal. Uh, oh yeah, I was pre-law when I went to Carbondale. And I did pre-law, yeah, for two weeks. And then I went to the guidance counselor and I'm like, eh. Like, uh, my whole soul is screaming out, no. These are not, this is not the classroom of people I want to spend the next four years with. Uh, I still wanted to do all the pre-law classes, but I needed to be a theater major. And I remember when I went home and told my dad, I'm like, yeah, so uh, I'm a pre-law minor now, but I'm a theater major. And I remember him just losing it. Like, you know, you have, of course, you know, he wanted me to be successful and be a lawyer, and the kid comes home and tells you you're gonna be an actor. Uh, so he lost it on me, right? But at the end of the day, I paid my own way through school, so no one could tell me what classes I was taking. I figured I'm the only one who has to wake up being me. Uh, so I'm gonna take the classes and make me happy. Uh, so I did it, and I graduated, and then I made it so much worse, because I came home from college. He's like, so what are you gonna do for a living, the theater guy? And he's got all these jobs 
jobs lined up for me. You know, like doing asphalt for this guy or framing for this guy. And it's all construction jobs so I could work my way up as a builder like my dad. And I was like, yeah, no. Nah. Instead, I'm going to build haunted houses for a living. And that was it, man. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> Walk out. Probably like how every dad feels with their kids at one point or another. Um, and so I told him I was going to do it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he yelled at me and he told me I was an idiot and that there's no such thing as a haunted house business. Because uh, in the 90s, let's face it, there wasn't. You know, there was a handful of people around the country that were doing it as a job. Everyone else was a charity case or something, you know. Um, so he was right. Uh, I just saw a different future. You know, I saw a need for this type of uh, theatrical event. I saw, you know, a, a place in the market for people like me and my friends to come together and create stories. Um, and even though he yelled at me when I was on my very first job site at Statesville and I was chalking my first lines on the cement in the barn, it was my dad that showed up with a pickup truck full of two by fours from his other job site. It was my dad that showed up and said, you're using the wrong tool. You need this and this. You know, it was my dad you know, that brought a friend over that helped me build a mirror illusion. And it was my dad that showed up first weekend and was a guy tearing tickets at the front door for me. Uh, so as much as he wanted to throw me off the balcony when I said I was doing this, he was there to support me. And, and what's fun is like then it got to like 2008, you know, which is you know 10 years later. Uh, I bring him in as a producer, thinking he just want to do those parts. And next thing I know, he's walking through the haunted house, and he's like, you know what? You need a better soundtrack here. And, and, it, and it was great. It was like my dad was participating. And, and I got to say, like it really brought us together. Uh, and so that happened at Navy Pier for years. So when this opportunity came up, you know, he was my go-to guy. And he, he became the general contractor for this development. So it was my dad that cleared this property, you know, and dug it all out and, and made right with all the rocks because, man, we got a lot of rocks here. Uh, and he, you know, contracted the building and brought in the electricians and all of that. So it's without him, none of the building wouldn't be here. We'd, we would not be where we are right now. Uh, and now he helps me inside with ideas and stuff, too. He's, he's, he's playing. He's, he's participating. So, yeah, it's a, and it's really a family affair. You know, I think that's another thing. It's, uh, kind of unique to what we do, you know. So that's my dad. He's my general contractor, my producer, and he's my on-site grounds manager for the season. My mom is in charge of feeding all of my kids. So I've got over 250 of them, actors and whatnot. My mom cooks for them every weekend. Three or four meals a weekend. Uh, so she's cooking for an army, you know, the zombie army. My aunt flies in from Florida to do the same thing. My cousins fly in from Florida to work with me as actors. Uh, my brother Kyle is my right hand man who builds and helps me produce everything and runs shows. My brother Bobby is my technical director who runs my build crews. Uh, you know, it's, it's my girlfriend Teresa is my scenic painter that makes everything look beautiful and helps run the shows. Uh, you know, my stepmom runs the ticket booth. You know, it's just like, it it goes on and on and on and on. It's like we, it's it's that you know, and, and it's that that yeah, we're all family here. You know, whether whether you're blood or not, you know, everyone's treated like family. And I, I think it's that part because I'm a theater person, and that part because I also love working with my family. So you know, everyone's got something at stake. You know, it's not a financial thing. You know, it's like yeah, we all got paid for it, sure, but everyone's got that same passion. You know, everyone's proud of this. Everyone's proud of what they've done, especially here at Hell's Gate. I mean, this is. What we've done in a year is just unheard of. You know, we developed the whole property. We built pop parking lots. We built detention ponds and septic fields and storm sewer drains. And then the, one of the biggest haunted houses in the state, um, all within a year. You know, so it's kind of insane what, what happened here. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, I've got my friends and my family who are willing to put it all on the line with me. You know, it's like I put all the money on the line and, and my partner, Rick, you know, put all the money on the line. Uh, but it was these people putting their, their time and their energy and, and their heart, you know, in this project that made it what it is. You know, money's not going to money's not going to buy you success. You know, it's just going to pay someone else to sell their product to you. <laughs> so I'm real happy with that. And thanks for coming out. You know, not a lot of I think you're the first one. You're the first one inside Hell's Gate doing an interview. 
Uh, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun for me. <laughs> like I get excited, like it's happening. It's like we're opening, it's happening, you're here. Um, and I would say anybody else who's viewing this that wants to know more about what we're doing, uh, not only do we have hellsgate.com, you know, for you to come see the haunted house, uh, but seriously check out daysofthelivingdead.com. Uh, that is the only web series that is a reality show behind the scenes of haunted houses that show you how all this is done. And it's, it's part inf informative and just part hysterical because uh, I love my crew and they're a bunch of weirdos and it's funny to watch them do this stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you want to learn more, check that out. Thanks, John. Cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.